Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, you'll see how you can automatically create Git repository and enable branch protection and do more with Terraform with Git of Actions. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and let's get started. Before getting any further, let's try to see what is Terraform. What is Terraform? Terraform is an open source infrastructure code software tool created by a company called HashCorp. Terraform is one of the most popular configuration management tools to automate infrastructure management. Okay, what is GitHub? GitHub is an internet hosting service for software development and version control using Git. It has a concept of repository where you can store files to collaboratively work together with others. Why would you want to use GitHub Provider from Terraform? GitHub Provider from Terraform allows you to interact with the GitHub resources. As you will see, you can use it to create GitHub repositories to enable branch protections, to create issues, and much more. Why would I want to combine Terraform with GitHub Actions? GitHub Actions is a DevOps CI CD that's continuous integration and continuous deployment or delivery solution that's directly available through GitHub repository. You can use it to automate even further using Terraform, which is great great way to scale your resources. Okay, great. What are some prerequisites? Here are prerequisites. First, you need to install Terraform in your machine. It is recommended to have version 0.15 or higher. Also, you need to have a GitHub account. And you need to access to a repository or organization enabled with GitHub Actions. Lastly, you need to know how to follow the command, execute command, etc. So here is GitHub provider, which you can find on the Terraform website. So here you can see how you can define it and how you can set it up. And all this information is here. And then there's a how to authenticate, but we'll use GitHub token, and you'll see how to do that. On the left side, if you click resources, you can find a lot of things you can do with Terraform provider for this one. For example, we can do create a GitHub issue, and we can also start with the repository, where you can see that how you can create a repository and apply settings, etc. This shows how some of the Terraform files I created. Here, here is a main Terraform file. You can see my organization name. That can be your user name as well. I'm just going to use organization. Notice how I'm setting as token, which is I'm going to show how to do it, but it's going to set as a variable. We're going to pass that later. So. Next goes to the version. In version, you can set the you know you kind of providers which is GitHub and then the provider. And then version, I'm going to use the highest highest one. As you can see, you can set multiple version, multiple Terraform files, and in the is smart enough, Terraform is smart enough to figure out which one you need to execute first. Here's a variable, and then I'm going to pass as there um environment variable, so I'm not gonna set here. You'll see how to do that. Here's a probably most important part, repository. Each this is every to create a new repository. So it's gonna give name and then visibility, all this information in the Terraform provider, the reference documentation. I'm also enabling branch protection. I'm going to change my default branch to development. So I'm going to create one, 
which has don't which is doesn't exist yet. And then I'm going to set the default range as the minimum range. So that's how I'm referencing that. And this is how I can set the branch protection for that branch. And I'm going to enable some setting. Again, all this information and the configuration is in the telephone provider in the documentation website. Lastly, we're going to create a dummy issue. So this is shows how to do that. Let's check the telephone is available by te typing telephone version. So this shows, should show the current version of your telephone. Now, we'll type telephone in it to initialize our telephone. So this is our current files, as you can see, and we'll type telephone in it. This will initialize structures and then generate the some state files and etc. So now if we do the ls command with hidden file, we can see those files generated. Now we'll do telephone plan. That will be asking to prepare, but you will see the prompt showing that we need to enter the value for a token. So we will go to the next step. Before proceeding any further, we need to create a GitHub token. So we'll go to the per login to person use GitHub account and go to settings. And on there, after, after that, we go to developer settings. And you will go to person's token. Let's generate a new token. Give some name. Mm -hmm. And you can say expiration date, where we want. And for this permission, we'll say user and workflow admin or if you're using organization, user. Again, the permission depending on what kind of permission and what you want to do with it. And if it's behind the single sign-on, you need to authorize it and make sure to copy it. If you refresh your page, it'll be going to be gone. Instead of typing it, we try to use it, export it as a variable. So we'll type export tf bar and GH token. Again, it might the command might be different if you're using Windows. So now after that we do telephone plan again. Now we should see that this is not prompting for token anymore. And this shows the summary of resources that we created or changes, etc. So you can verify it and validate. All the things are looking good. Should look good, good. But make sure that you check if you want to change anything. So now, next step is to telephone apply. So this will actually create resources asking you for if you want to do it, and type yes. So assuming that you give all the permission required, this should create equals, apply for protection, create issues, etc. Again, this depends on what kind of permission you get for the token. And that should be pretty much it. Let's check back your organization, your account, or your account to see if it actually created. And there's our new repo. So as you can see, it took the names and the inertia of the files with readme, and it created an issue. Let's expect this is the only issue that we created using Terraform. And also you'll see new branch called the main branch, and that is set as default, just as we expected. Now let's go to settings. We enable branch protection. So you can see the branch has this rules coming from Terraform. So all the branch protection is enabled and all everything looks good. Again, all this configuration can change however you want. Now let's change the gear a little bit and let's try to use our GitHub actions to Learn Terraform. So here's our sample repo, and make sure to create a repo and copy, and so you can clone. So 
So let's try to clone. We copy the URL. So we type git clone and URL. And let's go inside a cloned repo directory. So there you go. We use directory to and GitHub repo to automate our workflow. So I copy and add our project, clone project, to the Visual Studio Code so it can be cop easily copied. I'm going to create a new folder called git init. This is where our Terraform code is going to go. But you can name it however you want. I'm going to copy all the Terraform source code files, source files, not the state one, not the state files, but I will put all the source code here. I can technically make any changes there. Um, I will leave that. Uh, this you can see the organization name. I'm going to change the repository name to something else because they're going to duplicate. So I'm going to call this with actions and save that. I will leave everything else by default. And now I'm going to create a, a action workflow file. I'm going to call that create.github. Under there, I'm going to create a new folder again called the workflows. This is the how GitHub recognize actions. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call this action terraform dash git github.yaml. So now I start typing my GitHub action workflow. First thing I'll type to give it some name, which is called run terraform to initialize. But this is just whatever the game we want to see it inside your GitHub action with the print protection. For the event, it's up to you how I want to define it, but I'm going to run it manually. So work for this patch. And I'm going to run as input. I'm going to call this init repo. And I'm going to give some subscription so it can show up whenever I want to run it. Do you want to create a repository? Yes or no. And then I'm going to say if it's required, true. And then default, yes. But this is up to you how I want to define it. Now I'm going to define environment variable. This matters a lot. This is where how can pass the environment variable for the GitHub token and then this need a custom one so I'm going to call secret and call custom token later I will show you how you can add in the in the repository and then I'm going to define default we are going to, to learn this inside the working directory or uh, there's going to be working hyphen directory so a little misspelled there so make sure that you got it correct and when you get in it and the jobs I'm going to call this Terraform script and I'm going to launch on I'm going to use Ubuntu latest as a, the default runner and I'm going to call this some name for the job run Terraform I'm going to define steps so here I'm going to give some name check out so this will allow to check out the repositories and then I'm going to use the actions check out and then the version 3 and so this checking out so it, but you will be changing to that dead directory so this is where we will find the file now I'm going to stop Terraform this is how I can recognize Terraform I'm going to use that hash core again this is all defined in the GitHub Action Marketplace so first check it out and the next next step we're gonna call this terraform in it we've seen that before and then we're gonna this is optional if you want to define ID so you can check the output we're gonna learn terraform in it now we might have some additional stuff like terraform validate so we'll do the validate and then ID again is optional, but if you want to print out the output, that's up to you. This is all Terraform stuff right stuff right now. And validate no color. Now we'll do Terraform plan. 
and you need to define some ID and the plan and then run Terraform plan and then there's an ID shop option if you want and after that we do Terraform apply that's the final step and then run Terraform apply and this matters a lot make sure to apply or approve so they will skip for the prompt and just execute it so that is matters a lot that's pretty much it for your workflow now we will we'll try to check in the file git status git add and git commit yeah everything looks good and then give some message and we are ready to learn that's the git push so now all files should be available in our git repository so here's the article with our action file so we can check that whatever got pushed and this is our workflow file and we can check our Terraform files so everything is there so we can check that now let's go to actions and we're going to learn again how we want to define how we want to learn this doesn't have to be manual it can be through the merge pull request trigger and all kind of stuff but right now this thing manual is easiest process and that's how I show you that we we'll encounter error because we didn't set a GitHub secret yet so we need to do that so it's just a good um, demo to show that we need a secret so for this we'll go to settings and here we we'll go to secret and select actions and we're going to create a new repository secret and we're going to call this custom underscore token and we need that that token that we created earlier so we're going to go grab that and here's my token and I'm going to exit secret it's all good now let's try to run this again this time it should work refresh if you want to see the status faster and that should show our github action right now it doesn't store the state and if you want to store the state, like through the AWS, Azure, or GCP, or whatever it is, you need to configure Terraform. But again, there's more in Terraform topic. So, that's, uh, how you're going to configure your backend is up to you. And it's creating depository, apply branch protection, and creating issues, and everything looks perfect. So, that should be done. Now, let's go check our organization and there is our newly created repositories perfect and that's what we expect this is what we expect it that's it that's it i hope you like watching this video and be sure to like it thanks for watching again and hope you see you next time bye bye